Hi everyone, this is Dina. I'm the Nightly Stitcher here on Insta on YouTube and over on Instagram. And this is floss tube number 35. This is take number five. <clears throat> I don't know why it's so hard to get these things started. But anyway, uh, this is uh, Tuesday, October 22nd, 2024. And I'd like to wish my oldest daughter, Angie, a happy birthday. Um, I don't know if she watches my videos or not, but I just wanted to shout that out to her. Uh, <clears throat> so this is going to be, uh, September catch-up. First, I want to thank you all for stopping by. <clears throat> and I'm sorry I have allergies, so, um, I want to thank you all for stopping by, and I hope you enjoy what you see today. I have lots to show um, if you do enjoy it, I uh, would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my videos and like the video, and uh, then you can you'll be notified if you uh, if I have another one that comes out. So um, this, like I said, this is going to be a September sampler or sampler September um, showing of everything I worked on in September. And then lots and lots and lots of Halloween. So this is um, <clears throat> going to be my last video for a little while. I am getting ready to have back surgery next Tuesday. So I wanted to get this in because it may be a good while before I can do another video. So um, I love Halloween. I have lots of Halloween here to show you. I love stitching on it year round. I, I'm not a seasonal stitcher. I will stitch on things any time of the year. Um, I might be stitching on Christmas through Halloween. I might be stitching on Christmas on the 4th of July or Easter or, you know, it's just whatever I like to stitch on. <clears throat> but I love Halloween. And uh, I haven't been able to really decorate much the last few years, although downstairs I have several Rubbermaid tubs that are full of Halloween. With my back, I uh, have not been able to really get it up the steps and then put it out and then feel like putting it all away and dragging it back down the steps. So, <clears throat> I am sorry. Um, so anyway, um, I haven't really put it out a lot. So then the other day I thought, you know, I really miss seeing all my Halloween stuff, and I thought I'm just going to take a basket downstairs to the basement, get a Rubbermaid off the shelf, put some things in it, bring it up, and put them out, and if nothing, just, you know, put a few things out that I enjoy, so, um, I did that, and then the day that I brought them up, I laid them all out on our dining room table, the, the first batch uh, that came up in the basket, laid it out on the the uh, dining room table, and uh, my doctor called, my back doctor, well, his nurse, and I'd been waiting for so long to see what they were going to do with my back. I've had uh, steroid injections, I've had MRIs, I've had CAT scans, I've had what they call a diagnostic injection, where they numb up an area and you track your pain level for every hour for so long. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I was trying to figure out that noise. I do have a window open. It's supposed to be 86 degrees here today, so it's going to warm up. So anyway, um, yeah, I think it was that afternoon or the next morning, the, uh, back doctor's nurse called and they have scheduled my back surgery for next Tuesday. So I told my husband, I said, well, I'm not going to put all this Halloween out and then turn around and have to take it right back down and actually I'm having my surgery before Halloween so um, I said I just need to go on and take it back down and forget about it for this year so then I thought well I'll wait I'll get my cross stitch stuff out and I don't think I have it all out I just got to what I um, I just grabbed what I could quickly find and usually I put my stitching on the top of whatever else is in the Rubbermaid so it kind of doesn't get squished and out of shape. So anyway, I grabbed some Halloween stuff, more of my stitching, and I wanted to show that to you today. Um, 
so yeah, my um, my doctor says that I am going to be non-weight bearing for at least three weeks on my um, right side because your SI joint, if you're not familiar with it, it's part of your pelvis area. I've been to so many doctors that keep saying it's my back, but they can't really figure it out. And um, I've already had back surgery about 10 years ago. So <clears throat> anyway, I knew it wasn't my back from where it was located. So I changed doctors and he mentioned my SI joints. And um, so we went through all that testing and um, hopefully this is going to take care of the problem. And I may have to have my left side done, but they will only do, they will only do uh, one side at a time. So we'll see. And I don't know what my recovery time is, so that's why I don't want to leave my Halloween out because I know I'm going to be out of commission for at least three weeks with the non-weight bearing. So that's going to put us into the middle of November. So I'm just going to show you guys all my Halloween and then I'm going to take it down and put it away for this year. Um, I've been trying to get the house kind of ready so that um, Steve will have as little to do to take care of me and the house both for a while. So anyway, I think that's about where we're at. He had eye surgery a couple of weeks ago on both eyes and he um, is doing great, but he does have another surgery scheduled in November on his right eye and uh, Sabrina, our youngest daughter, will be taking him over for that since I will be out of commission. But they put a, a drain in his tear duct, I guess it is, um, and it's healed really nicely, so they're going to do the other one now. <clears throat> so anyway, that's about it for us. We've just kind of been sticking around here. I just haven't been able to get out and about still, and it's gotten worse as the weeks go by, so I'm going to be real anxious to get this done I know it's gonna be miserable my last my last back surgery was awful I mean it worked out fine but it was so painful for so long that uh, I don't I just don't know what to expect I'm hoping it's not like that um, and I don't know why the it looks like my camera's going dark and light and I don't know why it's doing that let me try to get it away from that window a little bit now you see the pit right here. See this? Ah, this stuff, this is all my scroll rods. They're in wooden crates down here. I have four wooden crates with projects in them. I call it the pit. So um, <clears throat> anyway, hopefully that'll correct the, the way the color is coming in and out. So anyway, as I said, this is gonna be a long video and I have a Diet Pepsi, you better get something to drink too, and a water, because I'm not sure how long it's going to be, but I think it's going to be pretty long. So anyway, let's get started on that, because I don't think I have anything else to talk about as far as life, and um, I have a shirt that I have roll, put the lint roller over like five times, and I still am finding dog hair, so... So the life of living with five Pomeranians, you don't, you shouldn't wear black. Um, so, okay, let's look at September, and I'm already dropping stuff. So September, I did sampler September, and I worked on, I actually pulled out on my samplers, I pulled out Mary 395, uh, Consider the Lilies, Dutch Beauty, Lucy Calcutt, and Big Red Ship of Life. <clears throat> and um, I worked on those. I did stitch a little snowman. I did have him finished, and I forgot and left him upstairs. Excuse me, because I didn't have, um, I don't have him completely done. I need to put the little loop and the felt backing on him, so I'll have to show him later. But then I also worked on Happy Haunting, and I did get it finished. So, I will show you, <clears throat> I'm going to show you what I worked on in September, and then we'll move on to October. So this is, 
This was not part of the sampler September, but I did get this stitched and finished, though. This is Happy Haunting by Lola Crow, and I started this last year. Can you see? I'm getting a glare, but... Um, so I started this last year, and I finished it up this year. I had it to the point this year of only needing to fill in the ghost, and I filled them in in um, Glow in the Dark. So if you want to see how they look in Glow in the Dark, if you go over to my Instagram, you'll see a picture of them where I, I took it into our bathroom. Our bathroom down here does not have windows. So I took it into our bathroom and closed the door and then took a picture of it. So you'll see how the ghosts glow in the dark. <clears throat> so this was fun to stitch. And I think I want to put this in kind of an ornate black frame. So needless to say, I have so much um, FFOing to do. And I, I don't even know where to lay this. I have so much stuff. Okay. Um. So, my other September piece, like I said, I did that ornament, but it's upstairs. So, let me <clears throat> let me go over my numbers. Well, no, I'll go on and show you some more of my samplers. So, I stitched on Mary 395, and it's stuck. So, everybody, I think, knows about Mary 395. She is a Bristol orphan sampler, orphanage sampler. Bristol Orphanage Sampler from England. And I really like this one. So that is the pattern. I am stitching it in uh, one strand of DMC 498. And then let me put out here. I have to move so slow because I don't want everything crashing. Okay, and that's not Mary. <laughs> Let me find Mary. I have two red pieces going, so I grabbed the wrong one. Uh, it goes this way. So all of these loose strings here are what I worked on during September. And I just left these threads out here to move on across later on. So, I think I made pretty good progress on it. I would like to I would like to do the one red thread a day that so many people are doing, but I never seem to pull two projects out in one day. I I sometimes I stitch in the daytime and sometimes I don't. Um it just kind of depends. I'm stitching this on 40 count, but I don't know what the color is. I just know it's 40 count. Um, using 490, DMC 498. <clears throat> and then um, my next one that I worked on in September was Consider the Lilies by Heartstring Samplery. Look at this glob of dog hair. See, I, th I don't even have to do anything. I just get this dog hair on me. Okay. Um, Mary 395 was by Hands Across the Sea, but you all probably already knew that. This is Consider the Lilies by Heartstring Samplery. And I am stitching this on a 22 count Hardanger and it's a beige look. So I'm not sure if I dyed that or if I bought that. Um, I started this April 24th of 20. So yeah, I need to be getting these done. So this is uh, Consider the Lilies. And I actually stitched over here on this side. And I did this tree and this uh, down in here. And then I did uh, part of this border down through here. So I got that much done. I like that one. I like doing the little motifs on samplers. And then my next one, I got to readjust. <coughs> And then my next one I worked on was Lucy Cowcut. And if you're not familiar with it, it's this piece right here. And let me see if I can bring it up and show you the bottom. I really like the bottom of it there. So I believe there's two Lucy Cowcuts that are 
out there. And this is Lucy Calcutt 1825. <clears throat> I am stitching it with DMCs. And it is stitched on um, 40 count again. I believe it's 40 count. I'm pretty sure it's 40 count, but it may be 36 because I stitch a lot on 36. And let me see if I wrote it down. Oh, of course, of course not. I started this September 8th of 22. And this is where I'm at. I think I dyed this myself, but I'm not positive. So I'm sorry I can't help you a whole lot there. But I really like the colors. I love these flowers up along this border. And I've got it all the way over here and can start coming down now. But this border takes quite a little bit of time. All right, that's number two. No, number three. Let me stand these up. I just hope I don't have a big crash. I may have to pause in a little bit and move stuff. <clears throat> okay, so then the last one I did for that I worked on for Sampler September was Ink Circle Ink Circle's Big Red Ship of Life. I love stitching on this piece and my progress along there you'll know <laughs> you'll see that I do because I've I've stitched on it quite a bit this year. Um so I should have unrolled it. Let me unroll it just a bit. So flip this off take this clip off of here okay so I can't remember I think I did all of this here and here in September I think that's where I left off so I really like this piece and if you are familiar with ink circles red ships of life this is the biggest one there is a medium size and there is a small and then there's one that's called uh, a, a ship of lesser commitment I think it's called it's real little so I would like to do them all and hang them in a grouping but anyway as you can see more red threads hanging down because I don't just stop at a point cut it off and start again I care I just leave them hang and then I carry them on down so this is my big red ship of life <clears throat> I love I love ships I love the sailing ships the old time sailing ships okay that is uh September's projects oh I did work on um Dutch Beauty from I think it's Herman, I can't remember. It's called Dutch Beauty. Um, you'll see them at, you'll see it in Fox and Rabbit's videos. It's like huge, and it's on my floor stand, so I I haven't brought it over here. But I'm getting close to finishing. It's kind of in three sections: a top, a middle, and a bottom. And I'm almost done with the top section so I'm about ready to drop down onto the next one but it's so massive it's hard to um, take it off my floor frame and because I basically have to disassemble the scroll rods to get it off of there it's not one that just clips on and it'd be nice if it was but I have to disassemble the scroll rods to get it off of there so therefore I just I just don't want to drag it over here and have to take it apart and all so anyway my numbers for september i had a total stitches of 7881 stitches i stitched 25 of 30 days i didn't have any starts but i did have the one finish which was um the haunted happy haunting and then i worked on seven projects so not too bad actually i did have two finishes i got to change my number down there because um, I had the little snowman ornament that I forgot to bring down. So, anyway, that's September's numbers. It's going to be interesting because since I tracked my stitches, the year I, I think it was the year I retired, I don't remember exactly, but I, when I, whenever I started tracking my stitching, um, 
I had a lot of stitching. I remember stitching, you know, several hours out of the day and then all evening. And every year since then, my numbers keep dropping. And I, I think I have it in the back of this book. So it's going to be interesting what I have this year because I don't really feel like I have stitched that much. But I started tracking them in 2020 and I had to finish the year out with a little over 146,000 stitches. Then I dropped down to 143,000. Then I dropped down to 106. And then last year I dropped down to 100. So I haven't been doing so well with my stitching um but i do blame a lot of that on my back because you know if you're if you're in pain constantly you just don't really feel like doing anything and so there's lots of lots of days and lots of evenings i'm either just sitting in my chair doing nothing or laying down so hopefully i'll get back to stitching more um so then in october let me show you. I did have a start, and I, these are going to be kind of mixed because I'm just going according to the month. So, in October, um, I started and to all a good night, and that doesn't show you very much, but let me find my... Okay, here it is. This is a pattern by Lindy Stitches. I've always liked this, and so I decided to pull it out recently. So it's, get the glare off, and to all a good night. I love that green house. And it is a green. It is called Meadow, and boy is it green. But I'm not using all the called for colors, but I'm using some of them, and the green is one of them. There, that's pretty good. So, I love the border. The border is so pretty. And it goes down the sides, too. So, that is the only other part I did was the steeple on the, or not, I guess, I don't know. That's not really a steeple. What do you call that? I don't know. It's uh, the top of the house. So, um... I got that far on that in October. Okay, let's figure this out because I'm I'm having problems with putting stuff around. So I started that in October. I actually started this pattern last year. Oops. I started this pattern last year, so I pulled it back out and I've been stitching on it. And it is... Where is it? Oh, it's behind this one. See? Okay. Patterns are falling in the floor, so I'm going to have to pause this in a minute. Um, let me lay this one down. This is Halloween in the City. And I know I don't say it right, but I call it Crochetta Go Go. And they have several of these. I like the Christmas one, too, so... Anyway, that's Halloween in the city. And I will throw that right down there. And this is how far I have gotten. And I'm trying to look through the fabric to see if you can see it. And I think I'm showing it pretty good. And this is a mystery linen that I picked up at um, Keepsakes. It's That's pretty accurate. It's kind of got a yellowish tint to it. Um, they didn't know what color it was. It didn't have a tag on it. So I liked it and I said, I'll take it anyway. So this is a, uh, I believe it's a 36 count that I'm working on here. So that, um, and then the other one, the Lindy Stitches, I can't remember what. I should have wrote this down. I was trying to get titles for the ones that I have, my Halloween pieces, and I forgot about these others. So, um, those two are what I've been working on so far this month. I did have a finish earlier this month on the 10th. I finished a Prairie Schooler, 
and this is the 2006 Prairie Schooler. And I think that is really cute. That's just, I have all the Prairie Schoolers as far as the yearly one. And this is only the second one I finished. So I want to do more of them. And that's why I have this on here. This is the 18 count Khaki Davos that it calls for. So I'm going to put another one. I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to put another one there beside it. And then I, I'm not sure if I'm going to make ornaments or small pillows or how I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to stitch on them. It's a pretty long piece of fabric, so I can do more of them. Uh, let's see. Did I show you? Yeah, I've only worked on three projects this entire month. So that um, is all of my stitching. The only other thing is I have not done well this month. I have out of 22 days, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days that I haven't stitched. So out of three weeks, I basically have not stitched but an entire week. So that is not very good totals. Um, but my back has really, really been bothering me really bad. So I, like yesterday, I spent most of the day just laying down. So, I'm looking forward to trying to get feeling better and um, getting more stitching done. So, now we're off on Halloween finishes from previous years. I have, um, how do we want to do this? I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it. Okay, I'm just going to pull this one. Okay, this is Halloween by Heinzit. And let me see if I've got notes on the back. So let me see. The fabric linen was a 28 count natural. I used DMC Floss 844. And I started this in 2001 and finished it in 2001. So it's a 23 year old piece. And then it has all the little charms on it. They may need to be straightened out. That's a little tombstone. He's kind of crooked there. So that's one that I've done. And these aren't in any order according to how they're finished either. So, but I will try to let you know what the designer is or the pattern name if I can. Uh, this is October 31st by Roveris. I don't have a tag on it, so I need to go back and see if I can find it in my planner and see when I stitched it and when I or when I started it and finished it. Uh, there was supposed to be a spider that comes down from, no, I guess it is from here. Um, I didn't like it. I don't like spiders. They really creep me out. So I used this little spider button, which was fine, but there, I just didn't like the spider on it. So I changed it up a little bit. This is, I believe it's an 18, it's either a 16 or an 18 count Ada. I dyed it with coffee and tea, and um, that's, well, that's about all I can say about that one, I guess. So it was only two colors. This is like a polymer clay button, and I don't know where I found it. So I probably picked it up at Hobby Lobby or someplace like that. Um, Joann's, you know, they, you can buy polymer clay buttons in packages anymore. It used to be, I think, just another button company was the only place you could get polymer clay buttons at one time. Um, can you hear the wind blowing? It's really nice out. Okay, this is an oldie. And do I have a date? I don't, but it's very old. This is called Trick or Treat. And it was by, it's by the Cricut Collection. And it needs to be restretched. You can see where the fabric has relaxed over the years. Um, let me see. It is stitched on seven count ivory herda cloth. And I don't even know if they still make herda. But it would have been a small, I think the book shows it as a small pillow. And I did it on the seven count, and this is 
probably an 11 by 14 frame, so it come out a lot bigger. So I'm trying to get tags on the back so I know. So I do have a place there for the threads I used in the start and finish date, but I, I haven't pulled any of my old journals out and looked them up. So that, this is an idea of if you've got a little tiny uh, pattern, you can do it on a large fabric and make it quite a bit bigger. So I thought she turned out cute. Okay, next I have, this is one of my favorite Halloween pieces. And it is called Happy Haunting. And you're going to see all kinds of reflections in it. Happy Haunting, and it's by the, uh, Stony Creek. It is done on a 28 count. The fabric color is pewter. And I know I use DMC threads. This was years and years ago. So I had the mat cut. That This is how it shows on the cover of the pattern. So I had the mat special cut for this, and then I took tracing paper and I traced one of these bats, and then I drew them up here, transferred the pattern up there, and then I painted them in with just a, bat, a black acrylic paint. So I've always loved this piece. Her robe is just, to me, it's just a knockout with her robe. Um, so, yeah, that is one of my favorite Halloween pieces. And let's see. Then the next Halloween piece. Oh, i got to move a little bit. Tootie's sleeping right down here. Okay. Next, I have these three little ones. These are from the Cricut Collection. We have the little bear that is dressed up like a pumpkin. And then we have the little bear that is dressed up like a skeleton. And a little bear that is dressed up, wait a minute, witch, I'm sorry. This one is a witch. Then we have the skeleton and then the bear as a pumpkin. And this was in the days that everybody liked ruffles on their pillows. I would prefer to have it more primitive now, but I'm not taking them apart. So they're just going to stay that way. But these were from, gosh, late 80s, early 90s probably. So I still like them. I still put them out, whether they have a ruffle or not. Then we, again, this is the witch. And this one I wanted to tell you about. I did his uh, skeleton part, all of his bones in glow in the dark, and his face and ears. So all of this is in a glow in the dark. And it's really cute when you turn the lights out and you see that little skeleton. Okay, next up. I made some of these notes and you know I put them on post-it notes and they didn't stay so I don't okay this might be this one no, I don't think that's it where is this one I know I I had the pattern out and I wrote it on a piece of paper when we get to it I'll just show it to you because I I don't know where all my I think the wind has blown all my, my uh, notes off. Anyway, this is Spooky Treats. I can't remember. I'll straighten that cat up. Can't remember the designer, but I know the book is in my pile that I'm going to show you, so we'll find it. But you stitched all of the, everything except their heads, and then you put this cat on there, which he... He really needs a little dab of glue under him so he'll set straight. And if you all do this, if you sew your buttons on and you have trouble staying where they're supposed to be, if you take a toothpick and just a tiny dab of like tacky glue and just slip it under there and press it down, 
that will keep your buttons where you want them and it doesn't hurt your fabric because it's acid-free glue so aileen's fat um aileen's tacky glue okay um this one is an oldie and if you really want to know some of these that i can't find if you go back on my Halloween from last year, you might be able to find some of these because um, I may have found what pattern they were then. This is from a company that you would get a tiny little plastic um, case and it would come with the pattern and the button. So it has the little spider button here and you would stitch them up and then just put the spider on it. And I still have some, but I, I didn't l pull them out to see what it was. But then I just framed it as an ornament. This blue, this is just, um, you know, garland trim that's got the wire through here. And then I just put the purple backing on it and another dog hair. Uh... This one is another oldie, but I do remember it. Oh, it's on the back. Halloween hat, and it's by Twisted Threads, and it is on 32 count, one over one. The color is cream as far as the fabric. I use DMC colors, and I started and finished this in 2001. And this tin was available through Twisted Threads. They have... Um, this hat, there was a flag I know that was made for this. So, I don't know if you can find these tins, these tin frames anywhere anymore or not. But, anyway, um, that was available back then for these patterns. I have a tag in the shirt that is just eating on my neck. Okay, this one is, um... A prairie schooler. Um, I looked and could not find the book that it came out of without going through all of my prairie, prairie schooler patterns, and I, I just wasn't going to do that. Uh, this came off of uh, something I bought that was, uh, was Halloween. I can't remember. It was just hanging there, and it wasn't something that it was supposed to be on. It was just like added decoration. So I saved it and thought, well, I'll use it on something else. So I added that to that, and then the little pom-pom trims. Um, I used uh, bat fabric. And the thing with this, I got this all made. I did this two or three years ago. Got it all done. Brought it downstairs, and the hanger was up here. And I thought, bats don't stand on limbs. They hang from limbs. <laughs> so I had to take it apart and put the little ribbon back on the way it was supposed to be. So, yeah, I thought I'd done really good till I got down here and looked at it and went back upstairs and changed it. This one, I think, is by the Primitive Needle. That's called By the Light of the Moon. It's, I've, it's been several years since I did this one, too. Um, but I really like it. I like those skinny witches. And then I used... Let me get my glasses on, because I can't tell if you're seeing it blurry or clear. Um, this is owl fabric. And the owls here are orange and black. Orange background. But on this side... I've also got the same pattern with the black background and the orange owls. So it's just reversed. And I like that one. Okay, the next one I have from previous years. This is called Haunted House. And it's a Mill Hill design. I did it as an easel. And this is what it looks like and I have it here if you want to look for it I did you know if I'm not sure if everybody knows this or not but if you 
don't, it's same way with anything you, in a store, in someone's house, whatever. If you see something, a picture on the internet, you can take a picture of that and do a Google search. If you just go to um, Google and hit the little camera part, then you can take a picture of it and it will find that pattern for you most of the time if it's out there. So I was able to go back and find some of these by doing that last night. So this is a Mill Hill kit and it's the Checkerboard Series number two and it's MHCB25 if you're interested in that. It's called Haunted House. And so I did it as an easel, and then I put this chunky chenille yarn around the edge. And then it has this fabric on the back and inside. So I thought it turned out pretty cute. Okay. I need to scoot back. My back's starting to hurt. Now I did these three. And I looked for these last night, and I could not find them. So I don't, I'm going to show them to you, but I just don't know if you'll be able to find them if you're interested in them. These, again, were small pieces that I did on a 10 count. 10 count, let me think. It's got to come to me. I think it's a 10 count Tula, T-U-L-A. So, I have Ugg, I have the cats, but I think they were showing them on small fabric, so they came out real little again, and then I have Eek, and they're all stitched on the same fabric, but I'm pretty sure it's called Tin Count Tula, and I don't know if that fabric's still available or not anymore either, because it's been many years. This one, I could not find either, so we might find it in some of my books that I'm doing over here. Because when I first started stitching, I didn't save all my patterns. But then it wasn't too long after that I did start saving them. So we might run onto it, we may not. Um, I know this is a Cricut Collection pattern. So I would assume it's called Acorn or Acorn Pumpkin or Jack-O-Lantern. Um, but I also did this on the 10 count Tula. And I think he's really cute. This is probably a five by seven frame, I would say. So I think he's pretty cute. And I'm running out of places to put stuff and I haven't even got to, okay, I'll put that back over there. Okay, this is from the Sunflower Seed. It's called Halloween Bandit. And I did finish this on um, a box. I was thinking I did it on styrofoam, but I can tell from tapping on it, it's on a cardboard box. So I may have cut matte board and made it because this is, this is many years old also. Couldn't tell you the fabric on it. Um, I don't know if I use called for or not. We'll look when we get to it. But there is also a companion piece to this, and it's, um, it's another black cat, and I think it has its cape open or something. I can't remember, and I don't even know if I have it. I just remember seeing it. So I did a multicolor bow, and I did cording on the sides. So that's, that's the Halloween Bandit. Um... This one is one of four. This is by Birds of a Feather. This one is called Holiday Season. So on this one is more of the um, fall, Halloween, Thanksgiving. If you look, you'll see some Halloween. You'll see some fall, and then you'll have the pumpkin or the pilgrims that says Thanksgiving. So there's there are four seasons is what they are. And I've done all four of them. You get them all four on the same pattern. But it is called Holiday Seasons by Birds of a Feather. And I don't know the brown. I have no idea. So I, I just have so much fabric. And I didn't... 
I, I never really kept track of the colors of my fabric because I don't really care. I just stitch on whatever color I like. So I'm not a lot of help when it comes to the names of the flat, of the fabric. You just kind of have to find something you like. So this one is another Mill Hill that I put in a frame. And this one is called Scaredy Cat. It's by Mill Hill. It's MHCB29, and it's another checkerboard series number two. And if you, you know, if you Google this, if you Google that uh, Mill Hill Scaredy Cat, these things pop up on Stash Unload or eBay or, you know, just different places where people are selling them that are still new in the package. So, um... Yeah, just because they're old doesn't mean you can't find them. There was something I found last night, and I don't remember what it was. But it was still brand new in the package, and it was several years old. Um, I'm going to show you that one last. Okay, this is one of my favorites, and I actually have finished this one last year or year before. This is lot by Lottie Dots called uh, Wicked Witch. Ding dong, the Wicked Witch is dead. Um, I did it on a piece of foam core board. And it has the witch's hat, the broom, and the shoes, and some socks. So I wanted something that was kind of witch related. So I thought that kind of all went together really well. I did this bow. I did two separate bows and just laid one on top of the other. This is a covered button that I just happen to have in this color. It's also fabric, but I save buttons off of old clothing or, you know, you get buttons in, you'll buy something and it'll have an extra button in with it. And I always save that. I have a lot of antique buttons too. So anyway, that is then mounted on a broom, on a witch's broom. So I really like the way this turned out. And then you just hang it up like that. Um, then the next one, my daughter stitched. And I finally got it finished. I'd had it for several years. And I finally got it finished. I think this was last year. But I don't even have a hanger on the back of it. It's called Which Way by Just Nan. And I, I did a Google search by taking a picture of it. And it did show up on 123 Stitch. And um, the pattern, also, you've got a witch charm here. The pattern does come with the charm, is what it said on 123 Stitch. But this is called Witch Way by Just Nan. I painted this. This is a tray. It's got the very, uh, very small lip around here. This came two or three sizes together shrink wrapped of trays and this one worked the best so I had uh, I took um, let me think did I cover cardboard I think I covered cardboard with this and slipped it down in there then I uh, took mat board not mat board phone core board uh, I, I usually use phone core and pin my cross stitch on this one is just, I think, a regular piece of mat board that's real thin, and I just glued it on the back. Um, but anyway, this is foam core that was pinned and then uh, glued down. I don't lace. I'm a gluer. I use Aileen's Tacky Glue because, like I said, it's acid-free. It dries really fast. I don't like hot glue. It, it's very thick. Um... I tried one time to use hot glue, and I don't, I don't see how anybody can use hot glue on their needlework because it's, it's awful. You, you can't even take it apart. I, I could take this apart because Aileen's um, tacky glue is water based, so I could, if the, if the threads were color fast, I could take this off, soak it in water, and pull it out and get the glue off of it and do it some other way. I mean, you wouldn't, but. It's possible, but uh, hot glue is just way too thick and stringy. Um, this is just an assorted Halloween beads that I got for Christmas from one of my family members. 
Uh, I had the I had the Halloween colors and then I also had the Christmas colors on my Christmas list. So I got both of them for Christmas one year, I think a year before last. So anyway, that uh, is that one. And then let's see, I'm gonna move that over there. This one I did something just fell on oh, my note. Ah, this is Boohoo by Luminous Fiber Arts, and I did these, I did a retreat in Alabama a couple of years ago, and I stitched on these mostly through the retreat, so I got it finished, and I wanted them together, since it said boohoo, I kind of wanted them to be together, I used um, this fabric, it's got black cats, on it but it's kind of hard to see and then this part I don't yeah it is it's a skull so it's a skull and then the two black cats so it runs down along the center and then in the back and then I put the black chenille trim on it and again I just use tacky glue and I should get all these little threads and dog hair off of this so I just use the Aileen's Tacky Glue and I run a little bead down through there and just tap it down. Sometimes I'll put a straight pin in there to hold it until it dries. I always start on the bottom. I never start from the top or corner. So I start on the bot. I always start on the bottom. That way if it's setting down and it doesn't look as good, it hides it. Um, okay. Well, this is the last one that's fully finished. And this one is called Remember Me. And this is from Birds of a Feather. This is very old. I don't know if I numbered it. Yes, I did. 1998. I did this, wow, 26 years ago. I love the way I finished it. I... I had just got a primitive black frame. Actually, I think this came from Eastside Moldings, which they are still in business. So if you Google Eastside Moldings, you'll find them. Uh, I took a couple of wooden bats, painted them, put them up there on the corners. On the corner. I bought this little fence. It was white, so I took some gray and I kind of made it a little more rustic. And then again, the black cat and the pumpkin, I painted those and I glued them all on. And they're glued on with tacky glue. So, I really like this one. I don't know if I used glow in the dark on him or not. No, I can tell I used over dyed floss. So, over dyed floss is in this a lot. You can tell from the lettering her dress. Um... The skeleton is a white and an off-white mix, so it's it's over dyed. But I really like the look of that. So let's see, where will we put this one? Okay, there and there. Okay, another drink. I'm gonna quickly show you this just because I think it's cute, and I have some more to do, and I haven't done it. This is actually a coloring that I did, and I thought the company was called Color Outside the Lines, but I could not find it online. I'm still going to try to find it or find my patterns. Um, I just have trouble with, like, being on my feet and going in and digging things out right now in my sewing room or my stitching room. So, you know, I would like to um, find them and, and do some more. But this is one of those you use a light box and a, a fine point permanent marker and you do all your outlining and then you just uh, color it, tape it down to something and you just color it and then you lay it on paper towels or something and heat set it with an iron. But I really like that. I did this many years ago again and then I got an old tree branch and hung it from the tree branch with some jute thread. 
so I always, I've always liked that one. Um, now we're going to move on to stitching that I did, Halloween stitching that I don't have finished. And some of it's like, why did I not finish this? It's so simple. So I just need to get my button gear. <laughs> this one, I believe was a free pattern at some time. It just says Happy Halloween. It's done on, I think it's done on an 18 count um, Heatherfield. Heatherfield fabric comes in different colors and I think this has got some wool in it. So it's nice to stitch on. So that is one of them that I need to finish. This one I finished a couple of years ago and I think it was by either like Crochet a Go Go or what's the other one? Curry Bot Curry Bot to Curry. I know I didn't pronounce either one of those right, but it's it'll get you there if you're interested in them. I did change the color on the balloon. It used um, kind of a mint green DMC, and I changed it to the purple. But I like the little witch at the bottom. Hold still there with her pumpkins and her cat. So this, I really should get these done. Maybe if I leave them out after my back surgery, I'll feel like doing them. This is Ouija board. I found it on Etsy. I did this, I think I stitched this last year. Again, I don't know what the color is. For some reason, I'm thinking it's um, a lakeside piece of fabric, but I may I may be wrong. So that one, and I think what I want to do, I want to have my husband just cut me a very thin piece of like plywood, the real, real thin, and I want to mount it on the plywood, and then put either black fabric or black felt or something on the back of the wood to make it into uh, something that actually looks like a Ouija board. And then I have this little bat, and I believe he's, I have to hold him the right direction too. I think he was also a free pattern, um, but I don't know who, it's been too long ago. So I need to do him, and I need to make sure I don't do him standing on the limb. On the limb, he needs to be hanging from the limb. And then this is my big finish from. Did I finish this this year? I think I did. I think I finished it this year. This is by Carolyn Manning. It's Halloween hijinks. This I had started for many years, and do I have it hanging up right? Let me look. Yes. Because sometimes you can get confused since the border goes every direction. There's the ghost and hat and stuff, so it's upright. Uh, Lenny from the Sable Stitchers, she's working on hers. She said she decided to start it after she saw mine finished, and I, I just had so much fun doing this. Now, it's not one that I want to do a lot of, but every time I did a little square, it was really fun to do. I always do my back stitching with two strands. There's not much, the only time I don't back stitch with two strands, I don't care what the pattern says, I like back stitching with two strands, so it shows up better, but um, it's kind of one of those things that you do um, what you like. I'm going to have to get a drink. I think everybody has to do what they like, and I like uh, two threads to backstitch. And I just think, like, when you look at the ghost here, or the other little guy, his face, if I'd used one strand, to me, it wouldn't have shown up quite as much. And, you know, a lot of times, if you use one strand, it kind of gets lost. It goes down in your thread. So, I just almost always use two strands on um, anything I stitch. So we are done with the actual stitched pieces, but now we have patterns to look at. 
I said it was going to be a long one, but I do want to um, show, in case you're not interested in staying and looking at patterns, because it's at 59 minutes right now, um, if you don't want to stay and look at patterns, I, I do want to show you my haul right quick, and um, then that way if you want to go on or if you want to go on and not even look at haul, that's fine. I appreciate you stopping by and seeing all the things that I have stitched over the years that's in Christmas. Ah, found this one. Hold on. Um, Spooky Treats by Knotted Tree. And that was the little pillow wherever it went. I don't even see it now. It's it must be buried, but it's the one that had the two heads that were buttons and then the cat. And those are just another company, just another button company button, so you could get those again. But this is by Knotted Tree. I knew I had this somewhere. Um, let me glance through here and see. This is the, the hot air balloon. It's by Madame Chantilly. These, I do have a pile right here of patterns that I've stitched and that I keep separate from my others. Let me see. Okay, the Wicked Witch. You know that one. It's La Di Da. I mentioned that one. Uh, October 31st was Roveris. And let's see. Boohoo was Illuminous Fiber Arts. And then Halloween Hijinks was Carolyn Manning. So, uh, those are the ones that I showed you. I also have stitched these, and I didn't run onto these easily, but I did these little pumpkins one year by Prairie Grove Peddler, and they turned out so cute. Um, so I did those. Let's see. This I did in a class a long, long time ago. I don't even know what the year is, but it's, it's, old 1999 we did this pillow or this uh, pumpkin here and it was all specialty stitches and then you filled it with um, those beans like those pellets and it's it kind of it, it's kind of a squishy pillow it kind of goes down so I did that and I think that's it so Okay, well, if you um, want to move on to other videos, I understand. So, thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed looking at my Halloween uh, projects that I had done in the past. And then we will go on to look at um, haul, and then we will look at regular patterns. So, I got right off the top, I'm going to show you my Stitchy Kindness. I have two very good friends that we met for the first time at StitchCon last year. And it was just like we knew each other forever. Um, so it's Jeanne and Ashley. Hi, guys. Um, so Jeanne was working, and if you, you have to go watch their videos. They are new floss tubers, and they are called... We stitch and we know things. And it's all one word. Don't put any spaces in it. It's just we stitch and we know things. And it's mother-daughter and they're just so fun to watch. They laugh at each other. Um, I found out Ashley's a stash us pattern stealer. Jeanne has to issue her a library card so that she doesn't keep her patterns that she borrows. I think that's so funny. So, anyway, um, Jeanne has just finished this piece, and she showed it in one of her videos. I think they have four videos now. And I, she was stitching on this at StitchCon, and I told her how much I liked this, and I had really debated buying the pattern for a long time, and I never had. So, she said she would send it to me when she finished. So, she sent me that, but then, along with it, she sent me, hold on, she sent me this long dog pattern as a belated 
birthday gift. And I had not seen this. I love peacocks, and she evidently remembered that, and I must have said that at StitchCon, or I don't know, maybe on my videos. But this is called The House of Peacocks by Long Dog. I don't ever remember seeing this pattern before. So, that one, she sent me this really pretty um, needle minder of a peacock. And then she sent me her and Ashley both. It's from both of them. A peacock scissor case. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. So, I want to, I really want to do that. And I have a pair of peacock scissors. I should have grabbed them. That will fit in there just perfect. So, thanks, ladies, for the belated Christmas present, or birthday present. So, okay, on other haul, I did finally get Raynard. Every time I ordered from 123Stitch, they were out. So, Raynard, I got Nettle, and I can't believe how many people that have already stitched and finished, fully finished some of these. And then I got Clovis. And I got a bunch of others recently. But I haven't started any. And then I got, of course, the Just Cross Stitch magazine because I subscribe um, to the magazine. So this is included with your yearly uh, prescription. And subscription, not prescription. <laughs> uh, it's got some cute patterns in it. Then I finally broke over. I've been seeing people show this book. I have a lot of the old ones. And the ones that I'm missing, I don't have them all, but the ones that I'm missing are so expensive on eBay and thrift books that I'm not paying $60 and $80 for one of these books. So anyway, I just decided, I think this ran about 30 I think. So, I thought I'm just going to go on and get it while it's $30 in case it's one of those that go up in price. But there's a lot of really pretty patterns in here. Um, I guess I could do a flip through, but I think a lot of people have, so I'm not going to do that. But I did get that. And then also by ordering that, I got a little freebie. And it's 50 designs. It's just a little leaflet. I'll just quickly show you. It's um, got ornaments and stuff in there. So I got that when I got the book. And then I ordered this. I found, um, gosh, I may have to, oh, I think I may have to shift. Okay, um. I found the designer floss abilities on YouTube and I, I really like their design. So they're in, I believe they're in the UK and the only place, I think the only place you can get hard copies right now is Hobby House maybe. Well, I just did a PDF. I ordered it through their Etsy store and it's called Trick or Treat Town. From floss abilities they showed this stitched up Lauren stitched it up and I think Sam designs it and their brother and sister I believe and he designed it she stitched it but I love this the little trick-or-treaters at the bottom are so cute the Victorian houses there's a cemetery the witch and the liner across the sky I just love everything about this and if you look real close, let me see if I can find it, point out. This is the little dog. Can you see it? Golly, it's hard to see. The little dog with the red cape. He is from the movie Hocus Pocus. So, uh, I just, I love that piece. I want to get that fabric. And I can't remember what it called for. So, I'm just going to look when I go to StitchCon, maybe. Um... I think Hannah's over here dreaming. She's making noises. Uh, what does it say? 32 Count Haunted Belfast by Picture This Plus. So I do want to find this fabric and actually stitch it on that. 
Okay, so now we are on to other charts. I have, I am not going to pick those up out of the floor. We're just not going to look at them. There's a few of them, but I don't think too many. This is the one I'm stitching on that is um, the Crochetta Go Go Halloween in the City. Wait a minute. I stitched these. Hang on. Oh, well, the Ouija board is by Cloud Factory, and it's on Etsy. These are PDFs that I bought. This is by Al Stitching House, Halloween, Happy Halloween number two. And I'm going to kind of go through. I know somebody said hold them up longer, but as many as I have, I don't want to hold them too long because we'll have a three-hour video. So if you see something, back it up and just pause it so you can write down what you need. Um, this one is by Cross Stitch with Art. It's called Hocus Pocus. That one would be a quick one to do, I think. This is Happy Mood Point Sampler Halloween. And you can find all of these on Etsy. This one is by Little Fox Stitching Happy Halloween. I think that's really cute. And you could do drums out of those. You could do five different drums if you wanted to. Yes, buddy. Are you needing to go out? Let's wait it just a little bit longer. And then this one I just thought was so funny. It's called Family Portrait. And it is by Mama Witch Cross Stitch. But I think that's so funny. So those are PDF Halloween patterns that I have bought from Etsy. Now we're going to start going through. Let me pull all my small. These are small as in little packaging, not small stitching. But um, we're going to look at them first. And then we'll move on to big ones. Okay. So this one is another Halloween by uh, Heinz. It. It's just a smaller one. And it's got the charm pack that goes with it. So um, this one is Silver Creek Samplers Flying Lessons. Several people have stitched that one. I've, I've always liked that. And I think I'm going to have to pause and rest my back a little bit, and I will be back. Okay, I'm back. I just had to take a break. My um, back was hurting. I'm going to pull you a little forward. I had to change positions because the sun is really coming in this, let's see, coming in this window here. So I don't want that light coming and going. So, anyway, I'm going to scoot back in this chair because my back is hurting. And we're going to go over these patterns that I have. So, and Tootie wants to be seen, don't you? Say hi to everybody. I know. Can you say hi to everybody? Say hi to everybody. I don't know right there. She says, I don't know what you're talking about, Mom. I just want kisses. So, anyway, I had to shift. You can now see the pit even better where my cross stitch is and uh, my fan that I use year-round. Okay, as far as the small patterns I have, I'm going to go through these kind of quickly. So, if you see something you like, just um, pause it and write it down. And then uh, I'll tell you the name and the designer. Um, some of them are old, I'm telling you that I've been stitching for 40 years, so. All right, this one is a Birds of the Feather, and I'm, and two, some of them may not be available, but you might be able to find them, you know, on the secondary market, too. Uh, Birds of a Feather, this is called Halloween Holiday. Let me, boy, I just can't get this right. Let me keep coming up a little closer. Okay, I have my coffee table there, and then Tootie will probably walk on the coffee table. What did I say it was called? Halloween Holiday by Birds of a Feather. And then, um, this one is uh, by Tralala, and I don't know what it's called. 
But that's the name of it right up there. Yeah, I don't know. Tra la la. Waxing Moon Designs is Haunted House Trio. I need to use both hands. Haunted House Trio by Waxing Moon Designs. Birds of a Feather Halloween Icons. Fast little stitch. Uh, Bent Creek Holiday. These were some of the Snapper series. Where you, um, I don't remember stitching this, but I don't have the snap either, but I've got snaps, so not a big deal. Hol uh, heart in Hand, Bird in Hand Halloween. And it comes with some little black buttons. Um, the Trilogy, Happy... This price tag is on it. Happy something. I've lost my glasses. Let me see if I can find it inside. Happy, maybe it's Happy Jack-O-Lanterns. Oh, Happy Jack-Jack Day. <coughs> there. Happy Jack-Jack Day. This is by Annie, the proper stitcher. <coughs> Excuse me. Is Esmeralda's Blackbirds. I'd like to stitch her soon. Um, the Sunflower Seed. I showed you that one. It's um, Halloween Bandit. And then um, With Thy Needle and Thread. Trick or, tricks and Treats. Boo to You by With Thy Needle and Thread. <clears throat> Jack O'Lantern by Sisters and Best Friends. Here's the other sunflower seed, um, Halloween Kitty, that I was talking about earlier. I was thinking he had a cape on. <clears throat> Stitches from the Heartland. And then Teresa Kogut, Snarky Cat. I think everybody's probably seen that one. With Thy Needle and Thread. I've not stitched this, but I have stitched a cat that uh, is freestanding like this. Black Cat Sampler. I'd like to get that one, too. Get it stitched. Um, Surprise Jack by Just One More. Be a cute little stitch. Fast. Pineberry Lanes. Pineberry Lane Cats and Jacks. Not Forgotten Farm. Uh, the Witches Inn. Not Forgotten Farm, The Giving Sisters. Um, who's that by? Gemini Designs, Batkin. Oh, it's this way. Batkin by Gemini. The Blue Flower, Halloween Squirrel. <clears throat> Bent Creek, Smiling Back Jack. Um, this is the Curry Bata Curry Halloween and Cross Stitch. October 31st by Cottage Garden. I've always wanted to stitch that white pumpkin. Uh, Cottage Garden, again, is Witch Board. This one is, I, I pronounce it Blue Desheen, but it's not, that's not right. 
I know it's not, can't be, I don't speak French, but it's a heart with all kinds of Halloween things. That's, this one is really old. I don't know, it does, I don't see a year offhand, but I bought that many, many years ago. This one is Halloween Arches by Bent Creek. And it's got some little star buttons that go with it. Waxing Moon Design Halloween Critter Trio. Rovaris is Hocus Pocus. And it has little charms that go on it. Here. Two charms? Yeah, two charms. Waxing Moon Design Halloween House Trio. I have tons of, of Waxing Moon Designs. Rovaris. Um, I don't think they have names. Well, it says Salem 1692. I'd like to stitch that one. And then with my needle, with thy needle, Jack of Lantern Jubilee. The front and the back. Spooktacular Volume 1 by Romina Petrucci. Pet yeah, right here. <laughs> <laughs> and this has 14 Halloween projects in it. It's really got some cute pieces, cute designs in it. But uh, this, this I bought at Galleria a couple of years ago. Okay, that's the little patterns. Let me put these two that I showed you earlier with them. Then we're going to start on charts, big charts. Not big patterns, big charts, or big size. That one... Oh, that was the one I dropped a while ago. This was, I bought from Cross Stitch with Art on um, Etsy. I think that's really cute. I keep all my PDFs in a three-ring binder that I buy from Etsy. Um, this one is not going to show. Let me take it out of the bag. I try to put all of my patterns either in page protectors or a Ziploc bag. 13 Spooky Smalls. This one is really a nice book. I haven't stitched anything out of it, but I need to just get a big piece of fabric and um, just put it on some scroll rods and start stitching until I have them all done. Okay, this is All, Hallow all Hallows Eve, and it's by Calico Confectionery. And you can also buy these on... Um, Etsy because this one I ordered I mean it was a hard it's a hard copy but I do I bought a couple off of Etsy um, this one is I don't know what this one's called and I'm not real confident with it and I won't buy a tinsel cross stitch and these charts are super, super cheap, so I'm not sure they're not stealing charts. I don't think I'm going to buy anything else from them because I think they're, I don't think something's right with them. I've seen charts that I think belong to somebody else, but anyway, I bought that on um, Etsy. And I mean, it may not be that they're stealing charts, but it kind of makes me wonder as cheap as they are. Okay, this is called Bewitching Stitching from Shannon Christine. I think that's so cute. This one is Tis Near Halloween by Kathy Barrick. Really cute. I love Kathy Barrick. I have so many of hers too. Uh, Haunted by Kathy Barrick. Another one I would love to do. Another one by, oh, that's the same one. I have two of them. Huh. 
Well, maybe we'll do them at a, as a giveaway sometime, but not now because I'm not I'm not going to be going anywhere for a while. Witches of Salem by the Primitive Hair. Uh, this one is Hello Halloween by Teresa Kogut. Everybody knows this book, and I think there's a stitch along or a challenge or something with this pattern um, now. So, but I'm not, I'd like to do it, but I don't want to start it now. I've got some small projects I've kind of picked out. This one's really cute from Rosewood Manor. Happy Halloween. Just all the hats wrote up, or you could do them individually. Uh, all Hallows Eve Sampler by Joan Elliott. See, my trouble is, I want to start these big ones. I love big patterns. Quaker Pumpkins, another big one. I'd love to start it. But I need to do small things. This is one that I've always loved and wanted to start. Another biggie. Hot, uh, happy. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Hello, by, hello from Liz Matthews. Uh, and this is Hello from Liz Matthews. Sleepy Hollow. Uh, okay, the Primitive Needle is, uh, oh, which is hollow. These are hard to get. Primitive Needle is very hard to get and very expensive if you can get them. Because she, she passed away and her charts are wonderful. October 31st by Imaginating, I think, yeah, Imaginating. October 31st. I like the way that looks like it's on an old fence. Uh, Kathy Barrick, Jack, Jack's Urn. This one is Springberry Creek Designs Pump Kitten. Becky Boo's um, is by... It's a Stitcher's Hand. It's the designer, but they had a series called Becky Boo's. This is Jingle and Jack. And then another um, a Stitcher's Hand, and it's a Becky Boo's. Funky Frank. Then this is... Uh, Spooktacular Halloween by Stony Creek Collection. This chart was only three fifty. Got a little age on it. Nineteen ninety one. Can't buy any chart for three fifty. I don't think anymore. This is another a Stitcher's Hand Becky Boo stars in their eyes. This is. <clears throat> Uh, cherry wood. It's called Jack and the Patch. And I have my working copy in there because I was going to start that one day and decided to put it away. But I think these are these are all specialty stitches. Uh, fancy that. It's called Boo. Just Boo. Another fancy that. That's called Halloween Tree. Another fancy that, Witchy Lou. Kind of dark there. That might be helpful. Um, fancy that again, Gladys the Good Witch. Another fancy that, uh, Franken Monster. This one I really like. I'd love to start this piece. It's by Fancy That, and it's pumpkin patches. Look at those faces. And they're actually stitched here, but the 
This looks like flannel, and it's stitched over the top. It looks like they stitch around the design, and then they cut it out. So, that looks kind of interesting. This is the Good Huswife, All Hallows Eve. Be a small quickie for that one. Um, another All, um, all wait a minute, is that my, that's my working copy. I forget and get these in separate pattern. I need to slide that down in there. Okay. Um, the Cricut Collection is called Frost. Frost on the pumpkin. So Frost from Cricut Collection, book number 173. Uh, this is Jack the Halloween Cap from The Good Huswife. This is Tis Halloween by Blackbird. This is Skeleton Crew by the Cricut Collection. My daughter stitched this. We both bought it and was going to stitch it, and she got hers done, and I didn't. Or I haven't even started it. This one is a nice one. It's um, Crows and Candy Canes by Heartstrings. And it kind of reminds me of Mill Hills. And it's got some Halloween and then some snowmen on it. This one, I always wanted to do this one. The Book of Spells by the Good Housewife. And I'd love to finish it like this book down here. They've got it framed here, but I'd really like to do it like this. I just never get any framing done. I really need to do better next year. Or I just never get any fully finishes done. This is Prairie Moon Ghoul Train. That's kind of hard to see because it's got so many little designs in it. But it's Ghoul Train. Prairie Moon. Uh, this is a Mosey and Me Who's Scared of Crows. He's cute. This is another Cricut collection called Orange and Black. I've always liked this one too. This is Midnight Watch, which everybody knows about this one. I've never stitched it. I'd like to, but I never have. This is uh, Halloween Greetings by Blackbird. Did I tell you that Moonlight Watch is Blackbird? But you should probably know that. And then this is Bent Creek Eek. This one, well, I've got some notes written on uh, paper stuck in front of it. So let me put them to the back because evidently I was doing a color conversion. This is called Esmeralda's House by Bright Needle Design. And if you know anything about Bright Needle, all of their projects are stitched over one thread. You could do it over two, but it'd come out quite a bit bigger than what they're saying. I did, um, I think it's called The Doll House. It's one of my unfinished ones. Uh, Spooky Halloween by Bright Needle. That's where I got those little framed pieces that I said I couldn't find because right there, remember Ugg? I don't know if you can see it. There's Ugg. Um, I can't remember what the others were. There's the cat. And I can't remember what the third one was. But that's where I got them. And I stitched them on seven count. Heard a... This one is from Plum Street Samplers called Grim Gourds. This one I got from the freebie table at um, Retreat in Alabama, in Gulf Shores, or Orange Beach, Alabama, a couple of years ago. Halloween Moon. I'd like to do that. And then, this one I also got off that freebie table, Spooky Welcome. 
and it's by uh, Stony Creek. Both of those were Stony Creek. And then I have Light My Fire by Sisters and Best Friends. This is a Curtis Bowringer. Happy Halloween. And I can't show you the pattern because I, it doesn't have a finished one on the cover. But it's, I'll quickly show it. It's a cat, a pump, a cat peeking out from behind a pumpkin, and then it says Happy Halloween at the bottom. And then there's another one on the back, the jack-o'-lantern sampler. It's all on the same one. <clears throat> I don't think people, surely people don't screenshot these and think they're gonna make a nice chart to stitch by. I wouldn't think. Uh, Curtis Bowringer. This is Halloween Pumpkins again. I'll kind of move it and then it blurs everything out. Okay, this one also has on the back cover the Boo Pumpkin. Okay. Uh, Curtis Bowringer. Happy Halloween. And then it also has on the back sampler pumpkin. And then uh, Cherish Stitches. This is a Quaker Halloween sampler. That one's kind of old too. Two, uh, 2009, not as old as I thought it would be. This is a Birds of the Feather Beware of the Cat. This is another Birds of the Feather All Halloween, All Hallows Night. This is Halloween Stocking by Kathy Barrick. This is The Ride by Designs by Lisa. This is Halloween Seed Pack by Carriage House Samplings. This is Ghouls, no, Ghosts and Goblins by Blue Whale Designs. That's an oldie. That is definitely an oldie. Does it say... I was going to say the 80s, but it doesn't show down there. It's a $5 chart, but Blue Well hasn't designed for a long time. This is another Bright Needle House on Booberry Lane. And the last one is Toil and Trouble by Plum Street Samplers. And I must say, this is not all of my Halloween patterns. Um... I take magazines and I tear out the ones that I want to keep and then I just get rid of the the uh, magazine. So I have those in page protectors and they're in three ring binders. So I thought about that, but I thought I, can't, I just can't go dig out any more than what I did already because I got to turn around and put them back too. So anyway, this is, this isn't all of them, but it's the majority of them. So as you can see, I have a lifetime of collecting. So, anyway, I got one more thing I found the other day, and I was shocked. I was, I was trying to do some decluttering and stuff, and I uh, ran onto this puzzle. And for sampler lovers, I thought you'd be interested in seeing this puzzle. It's by... I see nowhere. Springbok. But I didn't even know I had this pat this puzzle but it's a sampler New England fantasy so there you go sampler lovers start checking eBay I have no idea when it was put out it just says Hallmark copyright and no no copyright date but this is actually a sampler, and if you look real close, you see all the stitching. 
So I thought when I pulled this out, I said, well, I don't even know, remember buying this. But I said, I think my sampler lovers will like to see this. So I wanted to show it to you. Okay, that is all. It's no, it's not all. I got I was gonna show you what I might stitch on after I have my back surgery. Once I feel like stitching, I'm gonna um work on some small stuff. So I have um well I'm not gonna get these all out because I did show them to you one other time, but I might show you a couple of them. These were when I was gonna do 24 and 24, but 24 projects and 24, but you know, I, my plans, I don't stick to plans worth a darn. But anyway, I have this bag and I had 24 small projects out of Primitive, Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. So I had 24 charts in there and I think I've done like four maybe. So I have um, some simple ones like Bless Our Nest that I thought, well, I've got the fabric cut, so then I... And I've got threads in here, so I thought, I'm just going to do some small ones. I don't think I'm really going to want big ones that I have to concentrate on. So I've got a Q-snap in there, so I'm ready to go. But that, and then I had this. It's been in my um, whips for a long time that I, I don't even think I've... Started it. Oh, I guess I have started it because the fabric's not in here. Hmm. I don't know. Okay. I don't know where it's at. I'm going to have to find it. It's called, um, I'll show you the paper, the paper on it anyway, the pattern. Hands on design, harvest hexes. I thought I might work on that for when I'm kind of down with my back. I don't know this whole back surgery deal. I don't know if I have to lay down a lot, if I have to set up a lot, if I have to walk around a certain amount of time. I don't have any idea until I go to this appointment Thursday. I have no idea what to expect from this. So I'm just kind of getting stuff ready in case I feel like doing some stitching and if I don't, I don't, but surely I'll get to where I feel like stitching at some point. So I've got books handy to read, and I've been kind of on a reading kick at night when I go to bed. So anyway, um, I think that's it for today then, and it's an hour and almost an hour and 45 minutes. So I hope I didn't wear you out and bore you to death. So um, I appreciate you stopping by and seeing all my Halloween stuff. One of these days, maybe I'll have my house decorated, who knows, in Halloween, and I can show you some pictures. I used to decorate a lot, and it always was so cute, so maybe if I get my back fixed, I can start doing that again. So, uh, anyway, I appreciate you stopping by. Um, let's see, what else? Go check out We Stitch and We Know Things on YouTube. Ashley and Gianne, and um, Niecy Lynn, I watched her, um, so, gosh, so Sherry, I was trying to think, so Sherry, she makes me laugh every time, um, she's, she's pretty funny, um, haven't really picked up on any new ones. I haven't watched a lot of Floss Tube lately, it seems like, other than uh, the ones I tend to watch. I watch Laura, you know, Stitching by the Shore, but I don't think I have any new ones I haven't written down. I watch Curious Crafters. I did write that one down, too, but um, yeah, go on YouTube and do some, do some searching under... Uh, Floss tube number one, and you'll find all kinds of new um, floss tubers and older floss tubers. Because if you do a search under floss tube number one, it's going to pull everybody. So go check them out. See if you can find some new floss tubers. Give them some support and some love. Subscribe to their channel. I appreciate everybody that subscribes to mine. And uh, I'll see you next time. Don't know when, but I will see you next time. Bye.